Bonjour again, I am Belle and I am here to spread the gift of reading and storytelling with all of the world. I have been reading out of my treasury of fairy tales I found at my library. So far I think we have read Little Red Riding Hood, we've read Rapunzel, so I'm not going to waste any more time so we're going to jump right into this and I'm going to read you another story. Um, and this is the My Treasury of Fairy Tales. Um, it is retold by Nick Ellsworth. It was written um, originally by the Brothers Grimm. One winter's day, a queen sat at a window sewing. Suddenly she pricked her finger and a drop of blood fell into the snow below and she loved it. I'm just kidding. Suddenly she pricked her finger and a drop of blood fell into the snow below. She liked the bright red of the blood against the white whiteness of the snow. She hoped that one day she would give birth to a ch with <laughs> she hoped that one day she would give birth to a child with a lovely snow white skin and bright blood red lips. The very next year, the queen gave birth to a baby daughter. The baby had the whitest of skin and the reddest of lips. The queen called her child Snow White, and she loved her daughter dearly. Sadly, the queen died that very same year. Of course, she did. After some time, Snow White's father, the king, married again. His new queen was very beautiful, but she was also vain and proud. <laughs> she owned a special mirror, and every morning she asked the mirror the same question. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? You are, O oh queen. The mirror would also reply. And every morning the queen would smile to herself, for she knew that the mirror always told the truth. As the years passed, Snow White was slowly turning into a beautiful young woman. One morning, the queen awoke and asked the mirror her usual question. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? But this time, the mirror replied, You, O oh queen, are fair, it's true. But Snow White is now fairer than you. Da, da, da. The queen turned green with envy. No one was allowed to be more beautiful than her, even though Snow White was dearly loved by the king, the twisted, jealous queen decided to have her killed as soon as possible. She summoned the royal huntsman and told him to take Snow White into the forest and kill her. She told him to cut Snow White's heart and bring it to her to prove that she was dead. The huntsman took Snow White into the forest, but as he was about to kill her, he looked at her frightened face. He felt so sorry for her. He told her to run away and hide deeper in the forest. Then he killed a wild boar and cut out its heart so he could pretend that it was Snow White's heart And when he showed it to the queen. Snow White ran further and further into the forest. When she could run no more, she stopped and leaned against a tree to get her breath back. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed a small cottage, half hidden by the trees. She went up to the cottage and knocked on the door. Bang, bang on the door, baby. Knock a little louder, sugar. There was no reply. She opened the door and went in. In front of her was a little table with seven little cups and seven little plates on it. There was food on the plates and water in the cups. The cottage belonged to seven dwarfs who worked all day in a silver mine. Snow White was very hungry and thirsty, so she took a little bit of food from each plate and a little bit of water from each cup. She was a very thoughtful girl and didn't want to empty one person's plate and cup completely. After she'd eaten, she, she felt very tired. She went upstairs and found a room with seven beds in it. She laid down on one of the beds and fell fast asleep. When the seven dwarfs returned home, they found a little bit of food missing from their plates and a little bit of water missing from their cups. When they went upstairs, they found something even stranger. There's a beautiful young girl sleeping in one of their beds. Oh my gosh! They woke her and asked her what she was doing there. Snow White burst into tears, and after she had stopped crying, she told them her terrible story. But the seven dwarves felt so sorry for her, they invited her to stay with them, even though she could have been a murderer. But I, I can't pay you anything for my food in bed. Snow White cried. I have no money. The dwarves told her that as long as she cooked and kept the cottage clean for them, go figure. She was welcome to stay as long as she liked. As long as you clean and cook, you can stay as long as you want, sugar. Thank you so much. I'll do my best to look after you, said Snow White happily. Back at the castle, the Wicked Queen took what she thought was Snow White's heart and had great pleasure in feeding it to the dogs. <laughs> the next morning, she stood in front of her mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? You, O oh Queen, are fair, it's true, but Snow White is still fairer than you. Mirror replied. The queen screamed in anger. 
She knew that that mirror never lied. So Snow White must still be alive. She found out where Snow White was living and decided to play a horrible trick on her. The queen disguised herself as a peddler, selling little trinkets, pieces of lace, and pretty brooches, and went to the dwarf's cottage and knocky, knocky, knocky on the door. Hello, my dear, croaked the queen, pretending to be the peddler. I've got some lovely things here you may care to see. Oh, isn't it lovely, Snow White exclaimed as the queen held up a pretty bow. The queen convinced Snow White that she needed a new length of braid for her bodice. But when she helped Snow White put it on, she pulled it so tightly that all the breath went out of Snow White's body. The queen left her believing she was dead. When the seven dwarfs arrived home from work that evening, they were shocked to find Snow White lying on the floor. She didn't seem to be breathing. When they saw how tightly her bodice was tied, they quickly cut it loose. The dwarfs were relieved and delighted when she started to breathe again. They made her promise that she'd never accept anything from a stranger in the future. Meanwhile, the queen rushed back to the palace, ripped off her disguise, and stood in front of her mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all? She asked. You, O queen, are fair, it's true, but Snow White is still fairer than you. Oh, snap. The mirror replied. The queen was speechless with rage when she realized that Snow White was still alive. I'll think of another way to trick her, she thought, and, uh, and this time, death will not escape her. The queen picked an apple that had one, had one red side and one yellow side. She then injected a deadly poison into the red side and disguised herself once more. This time, as an old peasant woman, she went to the dwarf's cottage and knocked on the door again. Snow White went to answer the knock and was a little wary at first, but the old pleasant woman was so nice and friendly, she quickly relaxed and they were soon chatting away. Don't believe her! After they had been talking for some time, the disguised queen offered Snow White the poisoned apple. It's very kind of you, said Snow White, but I'm not supposed to take anything from strangers. Don't worry, there's nothing wrong with this apple, <laughs> said the queen. And to prove it to you, I'll take a bite out of it first. With a great crunch, the queen took a large bite out of the yellow side of the apple. She then offered the poisoned red side to Snow White. I suppose it's alright, and it does look delicious said Snow White. As soon as she had taken a bite out of the apple, the poor girl fell dead at the queen's feet. The queen rushed back to the palace and ripped off her disguise. <sighs> mirror, mirror, on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? She asked the mirror. You are, O oh queen, it replied. The queen shrieked with joy. She had succeeded. Snow White was well and truly did. When the dwarfs arrived home that evening, they could not wake Snow White. They stayed with her all night, hoping that she might wake up, but in the morning they realized she must be dead. With heavy hearts, they put her on a bed, and with bowed heads stood guard over her. Snow White remained beautiful, even in death. Years passed. Years? That's not fair. And the news of Snow White's beauty had spread far and wide. One day a prince decided to see the beautiful girl for himself. Her beauty took his breath away and he fell in love with her instantly. Tenderly, the prince lifted Snow White's head to kiss her. But as he did so, the tiny piece of apple that poisoned her fell from her lips. Gradually, she began to stir. What happened? She asked drowsily. The seven dwarfs jumped up and down with joy that she was alive, even after all these years, even though she's been dead and they were all just guarding her for a long time. Okay then. When Snow White's father, the king, heard of the terrible things the queen had done to his daughter, he banished her from his land forever. Before long, Snow White and her prince were married. Feel like a thin shot upon a ring. She never forgot the kindness the seven dwarfs had shown her for the rest of her life. It's the end of that story. So, if you really enjoyed, um, my reading of uh, Snow White to you out of my treasury of fairy tales. You can go ahead and like this video, you can subscribe, you can share it, um, so that we all may sh uh, share knowledge with each other and wealth of the mind. So, and if there are any stories that you think that you would want me to tell, please leave me a comment. Um, I'm open to sharing with each other. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. See you later, everybody.